Good evening. More than 11,000 people are now thought to have been killed in southern Asia after an undersea earthquake sent enormous waves rolling across the Indian Ocean. The quake measured 8.9 on the Richter scale, the biggest in the world for 40 years. Waves up to 10 meters high engulfed the coasts of many countries. The quake's epicenter was off the island of Sumatra in northwestern Indonesia, where more than 4,000 people are thought to have died. In Sri Lanka, officials say more than 3,000 people have been killed and more than a million affected. In southern India, 3,000 people, mostly fishermen, are reported dead. At least 300 have been killed in southern Thailand, including some tourists, and hundreds of people are missing. And waves swamped the low-lying Maldive Islands, leaving the capital Mali two-thirds underwater. Gareth Furby reports. This was Sri Lanka as the seawater flooded inland. Thousands have lost their lives here. And government officials say more than one million people, around 5% of the island's population, have been affected. The flood water came inland for several hundred meters. Some victims were washed away as friends and relatives screamed. Sri Lanka's Natural Disaster Management Center says it may be the worst disaster they've experienced. Across six countries in southern Asia, the death toll is now rising as the terrible picture of damage emerges. These pictures are from Indonesia, where the president has now declared a national disaster and state media says more than 4,000 people were killed on the island of Sumatra in a coastal region closest to the earthquake epicenter. And here is the moment when the ocean starts to spill onto the street. This is amateur video from holidaymakers in Thailand at the resort of Phuket. And captured on the same camera, one of the waves, its power about to be revealed. For many tourists in southern Thailand, this was a paradise. Not anymore. Survivors here evacuated on the island of PP, well known to many as the perfect setting for the movie The Beach. And from a tourist in the Maldives, this account of her survival. We didn't realize, we just saw a water plane coming up and towards the building and people from outside screaming and then we saw the water come in the building and very fast. Pictures from Indian television show the water overwhelming large areas of the coast. Hundreds of fishermen are among those reported missing. India's Prime Minister says everything possible will be done to help those affected. My heart goes out in sympathy to all those families who have lost their dear ones. <laughs> Sri Lanka has declared a national disaster and is appealing for international aid. And aftershocks remain a possibility. Gareth Furby, BBC News. Well, as we've been hearing, India, one of the worst affected countries. Let's get the latest now from southern India. The BBC's Matthew Grant joins us on the line from Madras. Matthew, what is the latest that you have on the casualty figures there? The latest figures in the state of Tamil Nadu are about 1,700 people being killed. There's uh, also hundreds more in neighboring states, uh, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, even round on the west coast of India in uh, Kerala, uh, a place where many tourists like to go. There have been de uh, deaths reported there as well. And are there many more people still reported missing? Yes, there are. Uh, in Andhra Pradesh, at least 400 fishermen were said to have gone out to sea or were out at sea this morning. They're definitely still missing. Uh, some fishermen's bodies have been washed ashore throughout the day, but I don't think anyone has really got a sense of what's happened to all the people who were out at sea when this struck. Uh, the, the, the Indian government is doing everything it can. It's describing itself as being on a war footing now, and it's sending helicopters and boats and uh, doing everything it can to find out what is going on. 
on. But uh, there are definitely still people missing. And on the more remote parts of the coast, it may be that people are missing or they may be dead. But really, nobody is getting very much information from those remote villages as of yet. We've heard terrible reports from the area where you are of many, many bodies being washed up on the beaches. How are they coping with the sheer number of bodies there? I think nerves are a bit frayed and fraught at the end of the day here. Uh, in the hospitals, there's some pretty chaotic scenes with people rushing around, wailing, trying to get any news they can about missing relatives. I was uh, down on, on the main beach here in Madras just an hour or two ago. And again, pretty sort of chaotic and slightly tense atmosphere. Uh, a lot of people hanging around, some of them looking pretty shocked, others sort of just trying to find out what's going on and, and very uh, kind of Yes, sort of nervous atmosphere even now. So uh, people are still struggling to come to terms with what happened. I mean, it's just an incredible shock to the city. Matthew Grant in Madras, thank you. Well, the epicenter of the earthquake was deep beneath the Indian Ocean, yet the destruction has been spread across a huge region. The quake triggered a giant wave of water which spread across thousands of miles of the Indian Ocean. On a beach in Thailand, the crowds flee in fear as a wave approaches. This did not turn out to be one of the really big ones to strike. But the power of these waves has caused devastation here and along thousands of miles of coastline across the entire region. The waves, known as tsunami, can move at up to 400 miles an hour. Out in the ocean, they aren't usually that high. But look inside at what happens as the waves approach the coast. The peak of the waves is forced upwards. Today they were several stories high, and behind them comes a vast and destructive mass of water. The cause of this disaster lies in the pattern of tectonic plates dividing the Earth's surface. The boundary between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate is especially active. Where the earthquake struck, the two plates are colliding, forcing the seabed to jolt by as much as 10 metres. The effect was felt right across the ocean, the quake generating a series of tsunami waves. So how does this compare with previous quakes? Well, the one in Bam in Iran last year measured 6.3 on the Richter scale. This one measured 8.9, the biggest for 40 years. And as to the waves... Papua New Guinea, six years ago, was struck by waves 17 metres high. Today's were 10 metres, still among the most dangerous of recent times. Well, this is just crazy. Look at it. It's just covering, covering the screen. A matter of at the British minutes. Geological Survey, um, experts were left stunned, not by the location of the event, but by its scale. This is known to be an active area which has produced uh, large earthquakes in historical times. Uh, but you can't tell exactly when, when an earthquake is going to strike. But the waves took up to three hours to strike, so could there have been a warning? There is a system for monitoring tsunamis in the Pacific, but the people beside the Indian Ocean had no chance. David Shookman, BBC News. It's thought more than 10,000 British tourists could be affected by the disaster, but at the moment, accurate casualty figures for Britons are unknown. It's the peak holiday season for resorts in the region, and with many hotels destroyed and some airports closed, travel companies are trying to arrange for holidaymakers to be moved to safety. This is what one of Thailand's most popular resorts looks like today. Phuket, especially busy with British holidaymakers at this time of year. Now they're attending the injured. Tourists helping one another while they wait for medical assistance. At least 20 foreign nationals are thought to have died here. There are reports of holidaymakers swept from the beach. We saw this enormous tidal wave um, approaching the beach and people started to run and suddenly it was complete chaos, people running and screaming as, as the wave hit. This is what brings so many here. This island was the setting for the Hollywood movie The Beach, the stunning scenery a magnet for tourists. But this is what's been left behind, a picture repeated across the areas that have been hit. Holiday operators believe there could be more than 10,000 Britons in the region. The tour operators are making contact with them as quickly as they can trying to find ways of getting them to safety and eventually, of course, over the next two days to fly them home to back to the UK. But with communications cut in many places, it's hard to assess just how many foreigners are still missing, especially those not travelling with organised tours.
It's actually a much trickier position for uh, the many thousands of British backpackers who are in the area. Uh, they kind of have to fend for themselves. And if in, in an area where sanitation, uh, water, even things like basic food uh, are in, in short supply, that is a very, very tricky position to be in. Tourists with travel plans over the coming days are being told to contact their tour operators. A number of flights to the region from Britain tonight will be going out empty to bring holidaymakers back home. Daniel Bircher, BBC News. Well, let's talk now to our correspondent, Chris Hogg, who's been following events in the Thai capital, Bangkok. Chris, summarise for us the impact on Thailand. Well, I think starting off with those, uh, those holiday areas, the pictures that you've just been looking at, hardest hit, the island of Phuket and the much smaller island of uh, PP uh, nearby. Although the effects of this uh, earthquake were felt as far away as, as here in the capital, Bangkok. It's those islands that were hit so hard by these walls of water uh, where we've seen the, the greatest numbers of deaths and casualties. The latest information we have from British officials is that at least 10 Britons are in hospital. Now that number is uh, likely to rise over the next few hours. It's still the early hours of the morning here. Uh, and as I speak, consular officials are, are traveling around the main hospitals in Phuket, uh, trying to establish just e exactly who's been injured and who might be missing. And what are the emergency services managing to do in the worst hit areas? Have they, have they managed to, go, to get to all the, the areas that have been affected? No, they haven't. Now, one of the uh, the biggest problems that they've got is is a lack of power. Uh, when these uh, walls of water hit these beaches, uh, not they didn't just do so much damage to to the unfortunate people that were on the beach or swimming in the in the hotel pools on the on the side of the beach, uh, but of course they they dumped all this debris uh, onto the streets and in many cases tore down power lines. Uh, so part of the problem that they've had uh, working through the night has just been establishing power. They then you've got this second issue, uh, which, uh, which has been touched on a little earlier, uh, of just trying to contact uh, these outlying islands. You have to remember that this, this area, uh, as well as those big islands that we've been focusing on, there, there are lots of little settlements. And uh, in the next two or three hours, as first light comes, uh, one of the priorities for the emergency services, for the Thai army and Navy forces who've been mobilized to help in this relief effort, will be to try to contact those outlying lying areas just to try to find out the scale of the devastation there. What stories are you hearing, Chris, from people who actually survived this? It must have been an absolutely terrifying experience. Well, indeed, and I think some of the most remarkable are, are from people uh, who were on holiday and uh, who were just doing the most normal things, sitting there having, having breakfast with their children. Uh, there was one Swedish tourist who said she was having breakfast on the beach with her husband when one of her three children raced over, crying out and being followed by this huge wave. Uh, the family followed other foreign tourists who were evacuated to the hills. They stayed there for hours without food. I can tell you it was a very warm day in southern Thailand today. They said locals brought them water. Finally, they returned to the seaside, and then the Thai people came again and shouted, the waves are coming, the waves are coming, and they had to drop their food and, and run off into the hills again. It's those kind of stories that give you a real idea of, of, of just how horrible uh, the, for these people that, that, that were having these, these amazing Christmas vacations in these, uh, uh, these, these beautiful white sandy beaches, turquoise waters, um, and they've just had them turned into a nightmare. Chris in Bangkok, thank you. Well, a lot of concern for Britons who have loved ones holidaying or staying in Thailand. Here, the Foreign Secretary, Jack Straw, has called the disaster a profoundly tragic and worrying experience for everyone involved. He says Britain is doing everything it can to assist. Let's go now to our correspondent, Jackie Rowland. She's outside the Foreign Office 